Well, hello again, Myth Junkies. This is Mama Mythos. Welcome to yet another video from our October series starring multiple horrifying supernatural beings. Get ready to be chilled to the bone as we unveil the Wendigo, the ravenous creature from Native American folklore. If you like what you see, don't forget to like this video, comment below, and subscribe if you're hungry for more. Now let's huddle close for this campfire story. The Wendigo goes by many pronunciations, more specifically under multiple native tongues. Wendiga, Wentico, Winnebago, just kidding. All lame jokes aside, this creepy creature is nothing to laugh at. Associated with murder, insatiable greed, and cannibalism, the Wendigo is a mythical, man-eating monster or evil spirit native to the northern forests of the Atlantic coast and Great Lakes region of both the United States and Canada. The Wendigo may appear as a monster with some characteristics of a human, but more notably as a fleshy, thin, stag-headed nightmare that smells like rotting flesh. Basil Johnston, an Ojibwe teacher and scholar from Ontario, gives a detailed description of a Wendigo. The Wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation, its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones, with its bones pushing out against its skin, its complexion the ash gray of death, and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets. The Wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from the grave. What lips it had were tattered and bloody, unclean and suffering from the separations of the flesh. The Wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition, of death and corruption. Whew, no dreamcatcher can possibly prevent these nightmares after reading that description. So the Wendigo was also known as an evil spirit, but to what degree? The Wendigo is said to have the ability to possess a human being and make them become a ravenous killer. It can even mimic human voices, which fools their prey into thinking they're safe. It hunts by luring its victim away from safety and driving them mad, deep within the wilderness, in order to consume or possess them. A prime example of this manifestation is within the Hollywood horror movie, Pet Cemetery. The Wendigo cursed the Micmac burial ground, and the curse's consequences would be that any corpse laid in the ground would become a reanimated cannibalistic terror. The story of the Wendigo itself was created to warn those suffering from starvation of what fate may await them if they give in to their hunger and resort to eating human flesh. Did you know that there is a medical condition called Wendigo psychosis? Well, if you didn't, you do now. There are historical accounts as early as the 1600s, cases of attacks from those afflicted with Wendigo psychosis. From men, women, and children, the possessed person has no discrimination against anyone, and their appetite is never satiated. No matter how accessible to food, there is always an overpowering need for human flesh. The following case involves Swift Runner, a real victim of Wendigo psychosis. During the winter of 1878, Swift Runner and his family were starving, and his eldest son died. 25 miles away from emergency food supplies, Swift Runner butchered and ate his wife and five remaining children. Given that he resorted to cannibalism so near to food supplies, and that he killed and consumed the remains of all of those present, it was revealed that Swift Runner's story was not a case of pure cannibalism as a last resort to avoid starvation, but rather of a man with Wendigo psychosis. He eventually confessed and was executed by authorities at Fort Saskatchewan. The 1999 horror film Ravenous was used as an illustration of the argument equating the cannibal monster to American colonialism and manifest destiny. The 19th century doctrine or belief that the expansion of the United States throughout the American continents was both justified and inevitable. How does that correlate? 
Well, in a few words, the quote from the movie states that the Western colonialism and manifest destiny will bring thousands of gold-hungry Americans, that the country will consume all it can without being fully satisfied or whole. Well, it's about that time, my favorite Wendigo. Until Dawn showcases that immense fear, carnage, and appearance of the Wendigo, both in spirit and in the flesh. No, it doesn't have a deer's head, but it's a great game. I personally enjoyed the experience. Who is your favorite Wendigo? Let me know in the comments below. Well, we're here at the end of the video, but don't fret, more is yet to come. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I'll see you guys next time, and thank you for letting Mama break down the mythos.